Hello everyone, this is Olive Branch and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Need for Speed Most Wanted. In this episode, we are going to be racing against Blacklist number 5, Webster. I've completed all his race events and milestone events off camera, and uh, today, because nobody voted in the thread, I'm going to be racing him with the Batmobile, the Lamborghini Gallardo we got from Ming. Let's go straight to it. This guy is looking kind of smug, and I really want his Corvette C6. Webster is the first blacklist racer who wants to do three challenges with us. He wants us to do a sprint race, a speed trap, and another sprint race. Well, we got our work cut out for us, but this shouldn't be so bad because the Batmobile is extremely fast. So let's get started. about you but compared to uh, compared to Ming that was a really underwhelming entrance but beggars can't be choosers you know Webster's got a reputation to keep as a, the, the number fifth ranked uh, blacklist racer and I just missed that shortcut opportunity a little bit too late not a big deal though Ming's Gallardo is extremely good in these curves. I'm really still surprised at how good it is. Taking the center here underneath the lighthouse for its fastest speed. Dodging cars, driving like a pro. Trying to make trying to atone for my horrible driving last video. But Webster is really not letting up. This is the first really challenging blacklist, blacklist race in quite a while. Oh, these curves are always dangerous. Especially when you have an oversteering power car like the Gallardo. There we go, taking the inside curve, smashing through all of nature. I don't give a shit. And with this curve, we are two thirds done. This is one fast sprint race, and actually, I think this is going to be a really fast blacklist race overall. I'm being careful here with all this incoming traffic. No need for speed breaker on these wide curves. You really want to save the speed breaker for a tight one. I'm trying to bait Webster into crashing in one of the NPC cars. The civilians can be come out of nowhere, and if if they're right behind you, and you just barely avoid the driver, your arrival may just hit it. And into the university we go. That is the first race complete. Webster was right behind us, but nothing much to it. The Batmobile has operated with a very good efficiency. We're going to continue to fight crime in the speed trap next round. Alright, here we are for the next race, the speed trap. Poor start there, but it's okay. Because the whole point of speed trap is to kind of let the enemy take the lead anyway and take over them, so you want to get some modest speeds instead of going all out. Now you may find this unfair, as Glazius in the thread pointed out, just saying, hey, this is not really fair for the racer. But another poster, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name off the top of my head right now, uh, said I was just p playing tactically, and that's in fact the case. I really don't want the enemy to get an unfair advantage taking corners at God knows how many speed or how many miles per hour, and I'm having to suffer having to crash into walls and actually have to break while they get a free pass. Webster's speed trap 
uh, race is actually very tricky because most of the speed traps are around corners. So you can't get a nice, big, juicy nitro boost to pump your speeds up high. You have to play a little bit more intelligently and uh, take the curve, just drift it. Not even, don't even hit the brake, but let go of the accelerator, take the turn, and then as you're coming out, the, out, out, the end of, out of the end of the turn, just nitro. Like this, taking the curve without braking, nitroing off the edge, and getting a very respectable speed out of it. This is what I want a speed brake for. These kind of curves. Get a nice little juke there. And don't lose much speed on it. For example, check out the next speed trap right here. This is the kind of speed trap that you want to take like this at really respectable speed. You don't want to be fancy. Because if you get fancy, you're just going to smash your car straight into a wall. And you may be surprised, but this is actually a really lengthy speed trap race. Most of the speed traps come early on, and the others come later. And I think Webster just had a truck full on there. Given that I'm giving him a lot of space behind me, I better just take the next speed traps going at a very high speed. And if you notice, we just went off-road here. Webster, this is really an annoying speed trap race because you're going everywhere but the road. The speed traps are all in positions that are really odd. You have to, you maybe want to performance tune your car, especially if it's a sports car like this Lamborghini over here, so that you can take these jumps with a little bit more ease and you don't drift so much on the dirt. It's not so bad really, but oh, but you want to also watch out for that. The trees, in the, the trees in the park are completely unmovable. So if you smash into them, you're gone. And Webster is not doing much better than I am. <laughs> he hit that rig at full on speed. He completely wrecked suburbia here. And right now, I think, yeah, okay, I think we're good. I don't think there are any more speed traps after this one. So right now, the only thing to do is not let Webster take a very large lead. Which is not going to be so difficult because he's driving like he's drunk or something. Must be all those tattoo fumes that seeped into his skull. Ah, I was wrong. There is one more speed trap up ahead. But this is going to be a tricky one. Not bad, not bad. 183 miles per hour. Webster's only got 50 MPH behind us, but we only have 10% of the race to go. This is pretty much it. Ah, that wasn't so bad. But it's not over yet. Onwards to the last sprint race. This is going to be a tricky one. This is a lengthy speed trap, or not speed trap, this is a lengthy sprint. His record is 4 minutes and 20 seconds or thereabouts. And I'm already starting at a great, with a great beginning. Completely wrecking some poor innocent person while I smash my Lamborghini full on into the uh, wall. And it looks like Webster's got a set pattern going here with the uh, with the beginning around the tire shop and the curve around the park. But just like before, he's also driving a little bit stupidly, smashing into every other civilian he sees as well. I'm not very proud of our driving, to be honest. <laughs> I think this is what it feels like in real life when so you give somebody a, you know, you give some wannabe racer a Lamborghini and a Corvette C6 and you say, okay guys, race. I think this is about how well it would go down. Yeah, like that. 
<laughs> like that. <laughs> That's the, that's the problem when, when you're driving these supercars with the large top speeds and acceleration and handling. The way the game works is that, you know, you, if you do the slightest fuck up, you're, the enemies behind you are going to take full advantage of that. And it's much more easy, much more, much easier uh, to get a fuck up driving a supercar like this than it is to get with a starter car or a mid-range car. So there are some drawbacks for being the fastest kid in the block. Not that I'm complaining, I really like the way this Lamborghini, go, this Lamborghini uh, operates. And I would also love to take a, uh, uh, love to take a shot at uh, Webster's C6. It may look ugly, even though some of you in Thread actually like the way it looks. I don't, I don't know, man. <laughs> looks a little bit strange for me. But despite the way it looks, it must still be one heck of a beast. And yeah, look at that. There's that case in point I was talking about. You smash smash into something, one screw up, your enemies will take full advantage. And we're going off-road one more time. Webster must really like this country club. Or this park. So much so, he completely knocked himself out again. I think I'm going to win this race not because I'm skilled, but rather because my enemy is a complete doofus when it comes to driving. But he's already back on track. And right on my tail. I'm definitely not hitting those trees again either. Into suburbia? Cause an accident? As always, and completely screw myself up, giving Webster a chance to pass me. Thankfully, my little uh, back and forth side swiping across the road cut him off. And we're almost done. We only have about a third of the race to go. And I think at this point, the developers were kind of running out of, of track ideas because we're going straight to the tunnels again. I don't think there was much difference between this and the speed trap, honestly. Oh jeez, big rig. Wanna avoid that. Hitting a rig at this point in the race would be a complete disaster. Look at that, same exit, same everything. Thankfully, Webster is completely out of the. He's completely outmatched. The Batmobile just shows off it can go against any sort of Corvette. And that is that. We have beaten Webster for a fat payoff of almost $50,000. We're really getting high into the money now. And there was not, not much doubt about it, the Batmobile has completely owned the C6, and now it's time for us to pick our marker. Alright, here we go. Uh, I'm going to start with the right side first. Oh yeah, that's the pink slip. We got the C6, and that means that we can get a unique performance upgrade. And we've got another supercharger. I don't think we've gotten anything but superchargers off this thing. But I'm not complaining, because the C6 is what's important here. We've also unlocked some new cars and new performance pieces, and I'm going to show those off at the end of the video to see if we do buy a new car on top of the C6 we've just earned. But who's our next rival? Meet Blacklist 4, Joe Vega, JV. He's got a Dodge Viper SRT10, he's good at speed traps, and this DJ guy is an awesome racer. Apparently, he's a really popular dude, and he looks kind of homey too, he looks kind of like a nice guy. Uh, I don't seem to, I don't know, he doesn't seem to be like into Razor's crew and all, 
So let's check out what his Dodge Viper looks like. Razor, always with the trash talking. And JV's Viper really doesn't look that bad. It does look like a snake, so props to him for living up to the name. Now that we're number 5 on the blacklist, time to see what new rides we've unlocked. Alright, so what cars have we unlocked? We have unlocked the Porsche 911 Turbo S, Bosch, and the Corvette C6, which we've just gotten a hold of. We can't get the new Lamborghini or the 4 GT yet. So the question is, do we add a 911 Turbo S to our rides? Or do we just keep the Corvette C6 we owned from, we got from, uh, from Webster? That's the question for the thread. So these next two cars, do we buy a Porsche 911 Turbo S? Or, and uh, how do we edit up, uh, J, not JV's, Webster's Corvette C6? Let me know in thread. And we're going to see how well we can race on the next episode of Let's Play Need for Speed Most Wanted. Anyway, guys, this has been Olive Branch. I'll catch you all next time. See you later.